Okay, in this video, we are going to be talking about CSS colors and backgrounds. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. We've already been displaying some colors with our H1. We had a background of blue and we had a color of white. So we're gonna elaborate a little bit more on this. So let me go ahead and change this style and I'm gonna add color and we've already been doing this. So we can say like color blue and of course the color will be blue. Then we could do something like red. So we can do these common colors, you know, red, green, blue. And those are simple enough to add, but if you want to get more complex colors or different variations of colors, you're going to need to use a different value. So you can always use those typical colors, but you could also use what's called an RGB color. So an RGB value is represented by RGB, and then we have a parenthesis, and then you have a value that is red, green, and blue. And this is represented from zero to 255. So we could say zero, zero, zero. And if we save that and reload, we're just going to get black. So how about we add 255 for red in the first one? And if we save that and reload, you can see sure enough, we get red. We can then change that up and do blue, set that to zero, zero, 255, which will give us a color of blue. And let me bump this up just a little bit. Okay, so we have RGB 0 to 0, 255. Now, if we wanted to change this up a little bit, we could even add uh, red, green, and then a blue. And this will give us kind of like a nice blue. You can see that we have this color picker here. This may not be in every single code editor, but uh, if you do see it, you can go ahead and just change it and then pick a value you want. Uh, but a lot of times you may even just manually enter in the RGB value and then get the color that you're looking for. You can also do a search for you know, certain kind of colors and you can get RGB values. So we have RGB that we can use, and then there is another format that we can use, which is called a hex color. So to represent a color using hex, we would start it off with the hash, and then we would represent the same thing. It would be RGB, but it'd be with numbers. So we could say zero, zero, that's gonna be our red, then we have zero, zero, that's gonna be our green, and then zero, zero, and that's gonna be our blue. And these hex values are represented from zero through F. So that's just the way that you display hex values. You go zero through nine, and then to go even higher from there, you go A, B, C, D, E, F. So we could say F, F in this first section, and that is going to give us red. So we can reload and we get red. We then change that to be the blue color right here. And of course we get blue. So you can play around with all these different types of variations. We could do F1, we do C right there, and save that and reload and we get these different colors. And again, you can use these color pickers and you can even just Google different colors. There is one tool that I like to use which is called Color Snapper 2. And this one will allow me to, I can press say shortcut on my keyboard and it will give me this kind of color picker that I can then Go hover over any type of element and click it, and it will automatically give me that hex value. So I could then paste that right there, and then reload and I get that color. So those are the three different ways that you can represent color using the traditional blue, green, red. You can then use RGB, or you can use a hex color. And this can also be represented using background. So we could say background, and we can also pass that a typical color, or an RGB value or a hex value, and it will work exactly the same. So that's simple enough. We just covered colors and background, but there are a few more properties for background that I want to cover. So right now we're just covering the background color, and typically you can just say background dash color, so you can get very specific, is going to be this color right here. And we have a few different properties that we can use for background, like we could also use a background image and we can specify certain properties of that image like if we want it to repeat if we want it to stay static as we scroll so let's go ahead and just cover that real quick so I'm gonna head over to images.google.com and I'll just search for a wallpaper and let's use this one right there ah, that's a animated GIF uh, let me use that one looks pretty good right there it's like an HD image Okay, so I'm just going to save this into my website folder. I'm just gonna save this as background. 
Okay, so what I can do is I can actually set the background of my website or the whole body. If I were to go up here and say body, I want the background dash image to be, and it's gonna be background.jpg. You can see if I toggle the sidebar, we're right here at, at our index.html and we're referencing this background.jpg image. So then we need to add the semicolon at the end. I'm gonna go ahead and save that and reload our page. And we're not getting that. Let's see what's going on here. So we have background image, URL, background.jpg. We need to set the width to 100% and a height of 100%. Let's reload that. I'm gonna actually open up my debugger tool. And I think this is good for you to kind of see how I debug stuff so that way you can do this yourself. So I'm gonna select the body and I'm gonna see that it is looking for this background.jpg. Maybe I spelled something incorrectly. So let's see, we have the background and we can go over here to network and if we reload this page, it's gonna say that it cannot find this image. So this is the image that it's looking for. Ah, okay, <laughs> that would make sense. So. We are actually in the CSS file, the style.css, and it's looking for an image that's inside of this same folder. So what I actually need to do is I need to reference it one directory up. So if I say dot dot slash, that's gonna go up one directory. And if we go back here to our page and reload, we're gonna see that background image. And you can see that background image looks pretty big. So there are a few other properties that we can choose for that image, which is background dash position, and let me close this sidebar. So we'll say background dash position, and I want to center and center. So on left and right and top and bottom, I want them both to be centered. Now you can see that that background is being centered. So you can see the contrast with the black text on this background it doesn't look too good. So we could always change the color to be white if we wanted. So we could say all the color inside of this page is going to be white. So if we reload, that looks a little bit better. It still looks kind of ugly, but I just kind of wanted to show you how you can add background images using CSS. So we have this background position center center. There's another one that we can use called background dash attachment. And this is going to specify whether we want it to scroll along with the content or if we want it to stay fixed. So if we set that to fixed and we come back here and reload, you're gonna see that as we scroll, the background is staying fixed. So, and one more that I want to cover is if we have a background that does not fit the whole width of the page, say we have a smaller background image, we can also set a background dash repeat to repeat. But if we save this and reload, you're gonna see that it doesn't look any different because the background is so large. So let me find a smaller image. So I can go up here to see tools and I'll say size. I'm just going to find a medium size image. Those ones look pretty big. Okay, this one should do good. So we'll say save image as, and I'll say this as background2.jpg. Okay, so let's say background2.jpg. We want this background to repeat. So if I come back here and reload the page, you're gonna see that that repeats. If we say no repeat, then we're just going to have a one image and you can see that that is being centered. We could also say top center. And now if we reload that, it's going to be at the top center. And you can also use different values for the background position. You could say zero pixels by zero pixels. And that is going to put it up here at zero, zero. You could then say zero, 100 or one. Yeah, let's change it to 100. We reload and it's going to bump that down by a hundred pixels. So let's go ahead and just change back the background image, let's make this center center. And let's go ahead and set this to background attachment of fixed. I think that one looked a little bit better. We can scroll, this looks like a website from back in the 90s or kind of looks like the old school MySpace pages. But that is just the basics of CSS colors and backgrounds. You'll want to kind of just play around with these and create some wacky looking websites, adding some different background images, different background colors, and changing the colors of the text. 
uh, it's pretty fun to just kind of play around and get to know it and get familiar with these properties and the values. So that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about colors and backgrounds.